Okay, you dog, you've got this. You've beaten Dark Souls 2 on New Game and New Game Plus, beaten Dark Souls 3 and all of the DLCs on New Game and New Game Plus, and you haven't finished Dark Souls once. Eh, what's the worst that could happen? Big Snake? Big Snake. So, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is the newest offering from From Software, that was almost redundant, after Dark Souls. Now, if I were to sit here and constantly compare this game to Dark Souls, that would hardly be fair. I mean, realistically, it is quite a different beast with new gameplay mechanics, an all-new environment, and fascinating new boss styles. With all of that being said, I am more than likely going to compare this game to Dark Souls out of sheer habit. So let's get started. This game has you taking on the role of a shinobi by the name of Wolf, or as you become nicknamed, Sekiro. Seki, translating to half of a whole, and Ro, translating to Wolf. Why the half part? Well, Wolf here was tasked with protecting the divine child Lord Kuro. In his attempt to protect Lord Kuro, Wolf gets his arm chopped off. Thus the half part. But it ain't all bad. For your troubles, you're rewarded the consolation prize of a sweet prosthetic arm. With this arm, you can grapple and throw shurikens, flames, and firecrackers, just to name a few. So, with your iron resolve and fancy new arm, it's up to you to get your master back and regain your honor. So let's talk gameplay, shall we? First things first, there are multiple level up trees which will award you new skills and combat techniques. These are purchased with the game's new experience system. Dying in this game will have you lose half of your experience points for that particular level, along with half of your money, but worry not, if you're in good favor with the powers that be, you can obtain unseen aid to help you. However, die repeatedly and you spread Dragon Rot. Dragon Rot is a disease that spreads to the various NPCs you'll encounter as they give up their life essence so that you may resurrect. While they suffer, you are unable to progress their quest lines. Now, realistically, it's not very difficult to undo this, but yes, you are punished for sucking. Now, if you're like me, then you have this habit of dodging every single attack. I mean, it works wonders in Dark Souls 1 through 3, so naturally, it'll work here, right? Come here. Closer. Listen. If you try this, you will die. Seriously, I can't tell you how many times I died in the early game, and continue to die to some extent because I can't break this habit. Instead, you have three options to avoid damage. Dodge, jump, and deflect. If you can figure out how and when to use these, then it's smooth sailing. I mean, the game's still hard, but at least you'll have an idea as to how to beat it. Oh, and by the way, there is no armor or shields available in this game. So, your options are as follows. 1. Get good. 2. See option 1. Another interesting feature is the addition of posture. Both Wolf and his enemies have a posture meter that, once broken, leaves them open for a death blow. Posture is lowered by blocking and deflecting enemies' attacks, along with attacking them outright. This feature even carries over to the bosses, with many of them able to be beaten by breaking their posture rather than fully depleting their hit points. Moving on to the bosses, well, this is both my most and least favorite part of this game. Let's start with the positives. First off, this game has some of the most creative and fun bosses in the entire Soul Shadowborn series. Yeah, that sounds right. Not only do these bosses force you to modify your playstyle by using unique attacks, but they are so memorable in their own rights. Ranging from a horseback samurai in a field of dead bodies, to an enormous ape at its watering hole. In fact, this game boasts my personal favorite puzzle boss with the folding screen monkeys, and an incredibly beautiful spectacle with the divine dragon. In fact, there is even a mini-boss that requires you to break his posture as he takes no health damage, and hilariously, this game even allows you to sneak in a free death blow against mini-bosses if you think outside the box. Now the problem. This game recycles bosses. A lot. I hadn't really noticed this until the late game, but I couldn't shake the feeling of deja vu. Now, in fairness, these battles do take place in different environments, and occasionally they add new hazards, such as multiple enemies. 
But on the other hand, there is a mini-boss that you can fight literally five times. On top of this, some of the mini-bosses are literally just more aggressive forms of normal enemies in the game, and even these are recycled. This is honestly disappointing because this game has shown that it can create some incredibly creative fights. And really, the game isn't even that long. So, truth be told, I'd be perfectly fine if they just had less, but more memorable bosses. But back on a positive note, these environments are spectacular. You'll travel from a war-torn village, to an icy valley, to a Buddhist temple, and even a valley full of monkeys. And true to FromSoft's MO, all of these areas interconnect. Along with creating unique challenges due to the terrain and enemies, these areas are downright breathtaking. You know, Sekiro had an interesting effect on me. On the one hand, I had a ton of trouble at first thinking it was anything other than a reskin Dark Souls, but the longer I played, the more I could appreciate it on its own merits. There is just something I love about the stealth takedowns, constantly challenging enemies, and epic duels. So if you'd like a challenging trip to feudal Japan, then I'd highly recommend Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. As for me, I'll continue to hone my skills. Will I be able to finish this game on New Game Plus? I'm working on it.